My first guest, Hannah Brown, says she found herself having a quarter life crisis as her love life played out on the TV in front of millions of people on ABC's The Bachelor and then as The Bachelorette. But it was after winning the Mirrorball Trophy on season 28 of Dancing with the Stars that she found herself caught up in a much deeper controversy. A video of her singing a rap song with a racial slur that went viral on social media where she faced immediate backlash from outraged fans. Hannah made a public apology, but says during that time, she felt like a complete mess. Yet it was in that mess where she learned the most she says about herself. Hannah reflects on those experiences as well as her mental health struggles in her New York Times bestselling memoir, God Bless This Mess, learning to live and love through life's best and worst moments. And she's recently released her companion book called God Bless This Messy Journal, a guide to embracing the beautiful, messy you. Sam Pham, help me welcome Hannah Brown, who's joining us virtually from her home in Santa Monica, California. Hannah, it's so good to have you on. Let me put your book up right here. There you have I it. I am so <laughs> excited to be on. It's such a blessing. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And, you know, listen, I know some parts of this are very difficult to talk about, but what we say here on this show, part of living and learning is giving people a safe space to talk and to receive what folks have to say. And you went from a private person living in a small Alabama town. You're now on a reality show in the spotlight by your choice, right? To go on The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. So you sign up for a certain risk factor there and you know it's on, you know, a successful show because by then it's the number one show. I was always surprised and in, in watch how you dealt with some of the pressure from the church in particular, because um, when you revealed, admitted that you had premarital sex, that came with a backlash. And I always wondered, did you anticipate that? Did you figure, okay, of all the things I'll have to deal with on this show, will I have to deal with something like that? No, I did not anticipate that. I don't think you can really, as much as, you know, I knew what I was signing up for in a way, you really can't anticipate what's going to happen. It's such a, um, it's your real life, but in a really controlled environment that is not normal. And, um, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen and then to kind of live it and then relive it and then see the backlash. It was, it was really yeah. hard. And my faith is super important to me and that it's a part of who I am and to kind of feel that, um, to feel like I was like pushed aside and said that I wasn't like a role model for faith. That was, I, I never anticipated that. Just like with everything in my life, like yeah. the things that hurt us the most are really the things that we can truly grow from the most and become a better person. I do like the format of your follow-up as the journal version of this. I think it makes it even more accessible and understandable and relatable, to be honest with you. You wrote after winning, uh, you wrote, you read your journal, you wrote about um, winning the mirror ball and you have the insert of uh, the journal. You said, I won Dancing with the Stars and I'd never felt less confident. It was not enough. I was not enough. It was merely the hardest most all-consuming distraction I could find not to deal what was going on in my heart. That was an actual journal entry that you included. Yeah, um, I actually remember exactly when I wrote that. I was, I had just won the mirror ball. I literally had it in a trash bag, um, trying to like, you know, it's a big mirror ball, like trying to walk through the airport. <laughs> I didn't want to like call the scene. And I sat down on the plane and I was just like, I've got to write down what I'm feeling. And journaling has been really therapeutic for me. But, you know, sometimes you think, you know, if I can just win this thing or get this job or have this relationship, I'm going to feel better. And it happened for me. And I remember holding the trophy up in the air and it was weightless. And I was like, wow, this thing did not bring me the fulfillment that I thought it was because I had a lot of things that I had to personally process and no yeah. object is going to replace that self-growth. Well, it's a live and learn moment going back to why it's relatable. You get something that you've always wanted, a relationship or a job or money, whatever it is, and then suddenly you get it and 
that aching insecurity or whatever else is still there. And you talk about at that moment, starting to drink more alcohol as a way to mask some of the pain because the, the win did not ease some of the other issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd never really been a, a drinker before. And I was on TV like every Monday for an entire year and didn't know how to handle, um, you know, how my life had so publicly been um, displayed and, you know, have always kind of lived with a smile on my face and, you know, thought everything, tried to pretend like everything was okay. But then when I was at home by myself, the only thing that was really giving me comfort was a glass of wine. And then it became yeah. more than that. And um, no excuses for mistakes that I've made, but it also, I was just not in the best place of life and didn't really know what resources I had to be able right. to get that help. You weren't in the best place. And then a viral moment um, also added to some of the insecurity and trauma behind the scenes. And up next, I'll talk with Hannah about the viral moment involving a rap song, her apology, and how she's moved forward with therapy and other things. Live and learn. More after the break. Welcome back, Tan Fam. My guests today are sharing what they've lived and learned and how they're using those lessons now in their own lives to hopefully help others. I've been talking with Hannah Brown, who says she felt like a complete mess during her time on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. So she decided to seek therapy for the first time. And now she's sharing what she's lived and learned with others. Hannah, being a Southern girl myself from Texas, when somebody says you're a hot mess, <laughs> we know exactly what that means. When you call yourself a hot mess, uh, that takes on a whole new level of reflection and awareness. I, I have to bring up, because um, I am curious for many reasons, uh, the video that went viral of you using the racial slur, you were on social media, the baby, um, rock star, the popular song, and um, set off a huge controversy. You lost endorsements. Um, in the live and learn category there, how do you describe um, what you learned in reflection of that moment? Well, that was a mistake that I made that um, not only disappointed myself, but it disappointed and hurt a lot of people. Um, and although it was such a hard time in my life um, and it was I, I hated that I disappointed and hurt people. Um, it really put me on this catalyst of this journey of self-reflection and education. And um, it got me into therapy. It got me to question um, so many things of my life and to seek more information and education yeah. and just be a better person. Well, it's a live and learn moment, right? It's it's everything requires perspective, right? And it's a live and learn moment um, that a lot of people have experienced, quite honestly. Uh, in the memoir, you also talk about the live and learn moment of suppressing pain, right? And that's a hard one because at the end of the day, you've suppressed the pain and you've masked it. You say you were raised that way. And now you found yourself, you found yourself at a crossroads where I could, you could no longer suppress it. You had to live it. You had to learn from it. And it did involve a family tragedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think after, you know, COVID for everyone was really tough and it kind of gave you a moment, like everything stopped for me. Um, and I think for a lot of people and that's, continuing bottling up the pain, just everything was switched down, switched down, switched down. And then um, after, you know, everything that happened, everything just like busted open for me. And I was like, I don't know how to handle all this. And a lot of trauma came up and I experienced trauma before, you know, at six years old um, with the murder of my aunt and my cousins and never really knew how to process that. And it wasn't until, you know, the past two years or so that I've really even talked about some of these things that have impacted my life and who I am today. And 
um, therapy has just been such an amazing thing for me to heal and to move mm-hmm. forward and to also be able to share my story in a way that can connect to other people who have also faced similar, uh, although unfortunate experiences in life. Um, but to have that perspective shift of like, yeah. I hate that this happened. I hate this happened to me. Um, I hate this happened to others. But how can I use what I've learned, what I've lived through um, to propel me into becoming a better version of myself? Right. Dealing with the pain, it hurts. It brings it back up. And it's not easy. And there's a lot of tears and having to relive those moments. But, oh, my gosh, the the weight that I've had lifted off of me to be able to come up close with my pain and my demons and my past and know that I can push through that. Um, I want to continue. That's why I I wrote my book and also, you know, put out this journal so that other people can own up to their stories and um, find the blessings in that and be able to use self-discovery as a tool for um, moving forward and yeah. for loving the new versions of the self that's to come. I know that. Well, a part of the new version of your life includes a new relationship. And since we yes. talk a lot about relationships on this show, and you were on one of the most watched relationship shows <laughs> in history, um, live and learn moment about love at this point. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is, um, I'm so thankful for our relationship now. It's such a mature relationship of two people who have gone on different journeys. I think I had to go through that journey of um, asking the, this question of who am I and what do I want? And he's also gone on that journey too. And we are people that do not find wholeness through each other, but through becoming whole people as individuals that can then amplify each other's growth. Um, and that's something that I don't think that I've ever had is somebody that is equally uh, encouraged and motivated by continuing to challenge and get better and move forward and grow in life as I am. And that just makes us, oh, I mean, I'm really proud of the relationship that I'm in now and um, can really see the progress that I've made just in how I view relationships and how I view my relationship with myself. Well, congratulations on the memoir, the follow-up, and thank you for coming on the show. We'd love to see you in person when we get back in studio. I would love that. Thank you so much. 